Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to assemble the boxer block. And here you can see he's all finished. This is actually the introduction to two different videos. One is gonna show you how to do it with a light box, and the other is gonna show you how to do it if you don't have a light box. Um, the boxer, this is, these, this, these are the videos where I go into lots of detail and talk you through all of the steps. I talk you through maybe you want to do bits at a time and the overlap and all of those details and explain all of that. I only do that for the boxer block because he's pretty representative of all of the blocks in the pattern. Some are less complicated and there's a couple I don't think there's any that are more complicated. So this is kind of giving you the most complicated blocks. It, it, it allows me to talk about all of the things you might possibly have to, have to deal with with any of the blocks in the more playful puppies pattern. So this is the one that talks you through all of the steps, but for all of the other blocks that are included in the pattern, all of the other dog breeds that are included in the pattern, there is a shorter video that just shows me layering the pieces so you can see what order they lay in and what tucks under what. If you have any questions, you can click on the links for those short videos and get a no words explanation, just me showing how the pieces all layer together. So here's how you put them together. Okay. I have all of the boxer pieces, and there are a lot of pieces to this guy. I've got them all prepped, I got them all cut out, and I have transferred the dotted lines from the back of the pattern, for the paper side, uh, to the fabric side. Just put them on a light box or hold them up to a window and you'll be able to see those lines through there. So normally I would be peeling the paper backings off as I show you how I put this together, but I'm gonna do another video with the same pieces that shows how to put it together on a light box. So for this version, um, you're gonna see me layer them together, so I'll show you how, he, how the pieces go, uh, in what order and what tucks where. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know, I'm not gonna be peeling the paper backings off because I need to shoot another video using these same pieces again. So when I do it without a light box, you'll want to ignore, you've got a placement guide um, and that does show you it keys to all of the different pieces, but for a light box, it is also telling you in what order to lay them down. But when I'm doing it without a light box, I ignore that order. And I always start with the shoulder piece that is going to be hanging off. It's gonna be butting up against the raw edge let me slide this up just a bit more so you can see that better. So it's gonna be lining up with that edge at the bottom of your block so that he looks like he's, uh, like you've snapped a photo of him and not like the head is floating. If you wanna make kind of a floating emoji style head, just leave the shoulder piece off and center the face or the head in your block. So that's the first piece that we're gonna lay down. And then next up, we're gonna lay this chest piece to give him his patch. And this has two lines on the back. This straight line here is lining up with the bottom edge of the fabric. Now, that's leaving a lot of um, this piece hanging over, and you're gonna see this in this pattern. What I've done, the way I've designed this pattern, because I wanted it to be able to mix and match, and use these pieces in other ways, I didn't want to chop that off. So if you want to, if you want to save a little fabric, for example, you can cut these pieces off. Don't cut them right on the dotted line. Cut them about a quarter of an inch past the dotted line. Uh, you could do that here and you can do it up here and you can do that before you even fuse it down to the fabric and that's going to save you a little fabric too. But I did it with the entire piece intact because on some dogs you'll want to use they have their, their chest patch comes to a little point up at the front top, and sometimes they have a chest patch that's very rounded up at the top. So for those dogs, you might wanna use this piece of it. So I just wanted to have this piece intact so that you could use it a lot of different ways. So we'll see that throughout this pattern on this one too. These pieces could be cut away, this excess here on this side of the dotted lines, and so could this bit that's going to be behind the chest. That would also eliminate the thickness of a number of layers of fabric. So if you're trying to make sure that you don't have too many layers built up, you, it's another reason you could cut those bits away. So that goes down there, and this layers on top of that, and I just need to cover up 
these chalk lines that I've transferred, and then I know I've got that in the right place. Now these are warping up on me a little bit because I haven't pulled the fabric off, the, the uh, paper off. So next up, I put the head, and we're just gonna set it there. Tuck that underneath this. Because this muzzle is gonna determine the actual placement. So let's lay the muzzle down over here. So that's gonna cover up, once I cover up these curved lines here, I know I've got the muzzle in the right place. And then I wanna take the top and just tuck it down so that that curve gets covered. So then I know those are all in the right place. Then I've got this odd little chin piece and I'm gonna tuck that up underneath the muzzle and it's gonna cover up that pencil line on his chest piece. All right, now I've got a couple of, let's go ahead and get his ears into place. So the ears are two part ears. So you've got the bit that stands up and then the bit that flops over. So the bit that stands up gets tucked behind the head and this curved line here on the uh, side of the head is going to end up lining up with the curved line here on this ear because that whole thing is going to be covered up by the second ear and this is the flopping over tip. And that just goes like so. So now we have like a standing up and flopping over ear. We do the same thing on this side. That covered. And then that is gonna lay down there. So we've got those ear pieces in place. Now we've got a couple of eyes and he's got spots behind his eyes. So those pieces are gonna tuck behind the muzzle. And again, you could just cut most of that away and just leave that quarter of an inch there. You've got a good line on the back that you could do that, use as a guide. So that gets covering up the lines on the head and tuck it far enough so that it covers up the chalk line there. Same thing on this side. And then, easy peasy, we've just got eyes and the second eye and then the nose. Now, this is all bowing up weird because I haven't pulled the paper off. In your, if you were doing it, you'd be pulling those paper pieces off as you go. And this would be laying nice and flat at this point. Just adjust everything, make sure you have it exactly where you want it, take it over to your ironing board or actually do the layering on your ironing board and then press it all into place. Just follow the instructions for whatever brand of fusible adhesive you're using. After you get it all fused in place, I leave it to cool on the ironing board. That helps to eliminate any kind of warping. And then I take it over to the sewing machine and do all of the outline stitching and then, um, then he's done. So I'm going to do all of that and then I'll bring it back in here and show you what he looks like with all of the outline stitching finished. All right, here's the boxer. He's all finished. I've fused everything down. I've done the outline stitching all around the pieces. I also added some catch lights to his eyes to really bring them to life. That's not included in the video, but there is a separate tutorial that uh, explains three different ways to add catch lights to any applique eyes, and there's a link to that tutorial in the pattern. Again, just a quick reminder that for this boxer, I go through all of the details and really talk you through all of the steps. The process now is the same for all of the other dogs, so now you've got that basic knowledge you need for any of the other dog breeds that are included in the pattern. But if you have any questions or wanna see me putting those blocks together for each of those different dogs, there is a no words video that just shows me layering them together. Those are on the light box, but the process of what's tucking underneath what is the same for, uh, for whether you use a light box or whether you don't. And again, just a reminder, this pattern includes a whole bunch of dogs. It includes 14 regular dogs and then a bunch of extras that you can make using the pieces in these 14 dogs and there are placement guides for those extras. 
but you can take all of these pieces and mix and match them to create breeds that I did not include in this pattern. And between the more playful puppies pattern, which is what we have here, and the first playful puppies pattern, between those two patterns, you have pieces and placement guides and videos for all of the 50 most popular dogs in the United States. And then with those pieces, you can make all but the weirdest looking dogs. So if there's a dog that you are trying to recreate that I didn't include that breed, or maybe he's a mixed breed dog and he doesn't match any of these guys exactly, you can pull, there are floppy ears, there are stand up ears, there are droopy muzzles, there are tighter muzzles, there are narrow heads and wide heads, and you can mix and match all of those pieces to create almost any dog out there. So have fun with it.